I'm going to read it first out of the authorized version, then I'm going to read it out of the amplified version, verse 14. Uh, I'm just breaking into a statement that he's making. He says, are not all ministering spirits uh, uh, sent forth to minister to them who are heirs of salvation? That is us. Look at somebody say, that's us. These, these angels, are they not all ministering spirits, ministering spirits sent forth? Uh, during the week when I said, Lord, what do you want me to teach on? What do you want me to give instruction on? This, this simple word that I'm reading to you now, ministering angels that are sent forth to minister to them, to minister for them. And uh, I thought, man, I need to talk on that subject. So let me read it out of verse 14 from the Amplified. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent out by God to serve, to accompany, to uh, protect those who will inherit salvation? The Amplified version finishes it by saying, of course they are. So with that in mind, let's continue in. How does God answer prayer? Now, for many people, they don't even know if God answers prayer or not. But you and I know God answers prayer. We have seen God answering prayer in a multitude of ways, but we're really taking it for granted. Something supernatural happens, something will change over there, God will do this and God will do that. But really, that's not how the kingdom of God works. And you've got to have a revelation of how the kingdom of God works to understand when you pray and God says, okay, we're going to do it, what exactly happens? This is where angels comes into play. For God uses angels to get the job done right here on the face of planet Earth, to bring you the things, to secure things, to add things, to do battle and to do warfare on your behalf. You've got to know this. If you don't know that, you'll be waiting on God just flicking a switch and doing this. and do. It's not like that. There's a warfare going on. There's battle going on. And let me tell you something that's going on for us and on our behalf. Angels have been used from the beginning of time. Angels are present according to the scripture in the Old Testament and the New Testament. When you read the early church, the first century church, man, they were manifested angels on every side during the progress when it was beginning to build. There's different types of angels, and we don't have time to go into them all, but we will give you a few this morning. There's, there's different types of angels. They have different jobs, they have different assignments, different obligations, different responsibilities, and different duties. And you will find, according to the scriptures, that they manifest themselves in different forms and different ways. The first one I'll bring to your attention are called messenger angels. Messenger angels are found all over the Bible, and messenger angels are still operation today. Now, we all know the one called Gabriel. Gabriel is the one that brought the announcement that... that uh, uh, that Jesus Christ was coming into the earth, was going to be born. So we know that messenger angels come from heaven, from the throne room, with a specific word from the Lord, bringing information to a person that will change the outcome of the current events. So whatever you're going through, you need a word. You need, we, need, we need an angel to bring a word to us, to bring, an, to bring a word so that we can know how we can change the circumstances that surround us. There's no circumstance permanent. Anything can be changed by prayer, and God releases those angels. Abraham, according to the scriptures, had multiple visitations. Daniel had a one visitation by a messenger angel that brought him a whole end-time revelation. Peter had a, had a, a minister and angel, or a messenger angel came to him when he was talking about going over to Cornelius' house when he was bringing in what we know as the Gentiles' uh, Pentecost. Then he was in death row, and that messenger angel turned up with him again and brought him out of there and gave him instruction to do more. And uh, with the Apostle Paul, uh, the minister and angel came to him on more than one occasion but when they had to go to Rome, it was in his heart, it was in his call, and it was in his purpose and destiny to go to Rome. And he had many hindrances and many obstructions. And the angel, this messenger angel, was sent to instruct and to tell him all is well. Acts chapter 27 and verse 22. He said, Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there will be no loss of any man's life on this ship, of any man uh, among you but on this ship. You remember when COVID first broke out? Do you remember that several years ago? And, and, and nobody knew if we were going to live or die. It was, I mean, now looking back on it, you know, we, we know. But when it first hit and the fear run across the nation, nobody knew what was going to happen. And I remember getting into my office. I said, I need a word. I don't need just a word for me. I need a word for my house. I need a word for the church. 
And here's the Lord, the Lord give me that message in particular. He said, there'll be no loss of any man's life among you, but on the ship. So there'll be, there'll be damage done, but you'll not lose any. Anybody that's with you, you won't lose a single one. And glory be to God, there wasn't. But let me tell you, the Apostle Paul was going, there was a major, major hindrances on our side, and the angel of the Lord stood beside him. He said, for there, uh, for there stood by me uh, this night an angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for you shall be brought to Caesar, and lo, God has given all them in the ship that seals what they were for, sirs, be of good cheers. I believe God that it was told me, even, even uh, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told. Let me tell you something. He had an angelic visitation, and the angel came and told him, All is well. Paul, you're going to go to where God told you what it's going to be. I, when I read this, I said, I need one of them. I need every now and then when I go places, when, I, when I'm trying to decide, should I go here or not go here? Will I say yes or say? I said, Lord, I need to know. I need an angelic visitation. Look at somebody say, I need one too. I need one too. Mary, according to the scriptures, whenever she was going to be told about the conception of Jesus Christ, was given by instruction by a messenger angel. The shepherds, at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, a shepherd came, a messenger angel came and delivered the news to them that Jesus was going to be born. Uh, Mary at the tomb, Mary Magdalene at the tomb. Let me just read it to you, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1. The end of the Sabbath, the beginning of the dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came, came and, and rolled away the stone and sat on it. What a sight to behold. Let me tell you something. And his countenance or his features or how he looked was like lightning. His raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Wow, what a sight. It didn't look like an ordinary man. It didn't, didn't look like a human being. Whatever, whatever this guy looked like was so fearsome that the gatekeeper, the, the, the man himself that said the gardener thought he was going to die. And, he, and the angel said unto Mary, Fear not, for I know you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, as he has said. Let me tell you, that was a messenger angel that came with a message from the throne room direct to somebody to give them instruction to tell them what to do. Many, many human beings have had an encounter with ministering or with, with messenger angels that God himself has, has wanted to get a word to somebody and dispatched an angel, dispatched an angel to do it. Sometimes the angels came in a fearsome way, like that one that we just read, and other times they came in human form. The Bible says in Genesis 19 and verse 1, and there came two angels to Sodom, even at even. And Lot sat at the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself, bowed his face towards the ground, and said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray thee, into your servant's house, and tarry here for the night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early, and then you can go your ways. And they said, Nay, or no, but we'll abide in the streets all night. So these angels, they looked like humans. They were just like two ordinary guys hanging about. And this man, Lot, he was courteous. He went and said, why don't you come to my B&B? Why don't you come over to my guest house? And stay and then you can go on your journey in the morning. These guys were having a conversation. Now let me tell you who those two guys were. They looked like two men. But they were the power of God operating on the inside. Heavenly beings, they came. They came with a message. They were two messenger angels. They didn't come to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed it. But they came with a message to Lot and to his family saying, God's going to deal with us. You need to get out of town and get out of town now. Are you with me? They weren't warring angels. They were messenger angels. They were sent with a message, get out of here and get out of here quick. Pack your bag or just bring whatever you have in an overnight bag, but move. Go on. I'm going to tell you something. They, they, and Lot and his wife and his family just got out in time and God thundered down upon it and destroyed them cities. Let me tell you something. They're, they were messenger angels who came to bring a warning, who came to bring a message from the throne itself. I need that at times. Do you need that at times? I think we do. And you're eligible for it as a born-again believer. Second one is the warring angels. Now, we need to know about these ones because we, these ones are on our side. 
they are also known in the scriptures as the heavenly host. Anytime you read the word in the Bible as the host of heaven or the heavenly host, you are now talking not about messenger angels, but you're talking about uh, uh, warring angels. They are fierce. They are loaded for devil. They are, and they guard you. They're standing round about us. They are the host of heaven, the armies of the Most High God. Now, to be honest with you, human beings rarely see them. The Lord at times would let you see. The Lord at times, I suppose, would discern in the spirit. Discern in the spirit, you may be able to see in the spirit world and recognize something going on. But, but few and far between are they that has actually seen the warring angels, but they're there. But on one occasion, a man called Elisha, a prophet, prayed for a man his eyes to be opened, and he saw the heavenly angels. He saw the warriors on the sides of the hills. They were surrounded by the enemy, and according to Second Kings chapter 6 and verse 15, when the servant of the man of God had risen early and gone forth, behold, a host com uh, uh, compassed uh, the city both with horses and with chariots. And his servant said, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. They were there all along. You just couldn't see them. But they were there. They were standing between the man of God and between the mountain. They were there. I want to tell you something. They're there. Everywhere we are, they are there. They're doing warfare on our behalf. Psalm 68 and verse 17 says, The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. And not just turned up for one battle. One battle. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The same heavenly host, that same war and army, that's just a small part of it, by the way, but that same army turned up whenever the messenger angel came for to get announced to the shepherds about the birth of Jesus. Let me read it to you, see if you can identify it. Luke chapter 6 and verse 9. Though the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sort of afraid. And the angel said, tells me straight away, he's brought a message He's brought a message from the throne room to these guys. This is a messenger angel. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Something now different happens now. And suddenly, this is a separate incident, suddenly, Bible says there was, a, uh, there was with the angel a multitude of a heavenly host. We understand one angel began to tell, bring the news, a messenger angel came down. But such was the goings on and such was the event at the time that the warring angels were also there in their mass multitudes and they couldn't hold back any longer but they burst forth on the time singing and rejoicing. I want to tell you someone heard couldn't have killed the Christ child at that moment because the warring angels were on sight. There's many times you may not know it, and I'm here to tell you something. There's many times your life is hung in the balance. There's many times you're going somewhere, and the enemy was out to ambush you. There was times you were driving at 50 mile an hour. <laughs> Some of you in a 30 mile an hour zone, but some of you were driving at 70, you're driving at 80, but you didn't know that three roads up, there was a tractor about to pull up, there was horses about to come on, something was about to happen because the enemy wanted you off the face of time, but angels were dispatched, warring angels were dispatched on your behalf to do battle. I want to tell you something, there's warring angels around your house, around your home, when your teenagers are out and you don't know where they are and what they're doing, loose them angels because the angels knows exactly where they are and they can stand round about them and they can guard them and they can do battle and warfare on their behalf. I am telling you, I am excited about this this morning because I know there's messenger angels can get to me they can bring me information that I need. It doesn't have to be with a manifestation of glory breaking through. It can be like a human being walking down somewhere and saying, have you read this book? And then disappearing. And that book can haunt me the information. And I look at somebody say, messenger angels. 
I like to hear more about the war and angels because there's the angels of war. They do battle on our behalf. They're fighting for our house, fighting for our family. They're fighting for our nation. The book of Joshua tells us in Joshua chapter 5 and verse 13. This is when they were going after Jericho and Jericho was besieged. It came to pass that when Joshua was about to, or there standing ready to do war against Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold there was a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said, Are you for us? Are you with the enemy? And he said, Nay, but I'm the captain of the host of the, of the Lord and, I've, and, and now I'm come. And Joshua fell on his face on the earth and did worship and said unto him, so what is it you want my servant to do? And the captain of the Lord of hosts said this, Joshua, loose your shoes, take the laces off, and take your shoes off, son, because you're standing on holy ground. Don't you know the angels are there? When the angels, it becomes holy ground. The enemy can't trespass. The enemy, he knows, he knows he's outnumbered. He knows it. And there were, but you've got to understand there's ranks, and there's officers in it. And the Bible said this man that came, and nobody else seemingly seen him, but Joshua's talking to him, and he identified himself as the captain of the host. He's evidently getting orders from somewhere, from higher than, higher than him, for it be dispatched to certain, to Van Bridge. Maybe they need a whole bunch of angels this morning at Van Bridge. I don't know. But here's what the Bible says, Psalm 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. The word encampeth, it means to be like a tent, folding over a tent that covers to bring protection. The angels, the warring angels come like a covering to protect you. Look at somebody say, I need protected. Do they protect everybody? No, I'm afraid they don't. It says they protect them that fear the Lord. You have got to walk in fear. You have got to walk in reverence. You've got to, let me tell you something, if you want those warring angels to come into your house, you might have to clean your house up. If you want the warring angels to fight for you, you might have to clean yourself up. There's things you might not be able to do anymore. I remember talking to a young man, he was under my leadership for many, many years, I was instructing him in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the ministry of a prophet, I was teaching him the things he needed to do, and he began to excel, and he began to do signs and wonders. And one Monday he called me, he was telling me about something else that had came past in, a, in his ministry and all our miracle broke out. And he stopped and he said, I want, you to, I want you to know this, Pastor Joe. He said, I want you to know I walk and operate in the fear of God. More than the desire for the miracles, more than the desire for fame or fortune, he says, I operate in the fear of God. He said, I watch what I say, I watch where I go, and I watch what I do. He said, I don't want to do anything that would interfere or offend or embarrass the Lord in any shape or form or direction. He said, I want this place where I can be close to God and God is, can be close to me. For he says, I'll do whatever it takes to get that intimacy with God on board. And I, I, I tell you, it I, I, I took me by surprise because he was talking about these miracles. And I understood his heart at that moment in time was not to see the great miracles but was to be touched by God himself. And he, un he was just young, but he understood what gets me there, what keeps me there, is the fear of God. Somehow or another, we've lost that in the kingdom of God. But somehow or another, we've got to get that back. If you want the angels of the Lord to fight for you, you need them to fight for your family. You need them to fight for your business. You need them to If you want those warring angels to come in, if you want clothed and protected, then you must walk in the fear of the Lord. You've got to get before him and say, is there anything between us? Is there anything in my life that should not be there? And having been under the microscope of God, if there is, he'll tell you in 10 seconds, you don't have to do a witch hunt. If there's nothing comes to mind and he's not rebuking you, just smile and say, okay, let's get the business. Bring the warring angels on. Psalm 91 verse 11. Listen to this. talks about God. He gives his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. This word charge, it means to assign or to watch over. Here's what God says. I literally, literally give angels an assignment to come to you and watch over you personally. The Bible tells us on more than one occasion that I, I, I've, I've read books, I read a lot of books about people who's went to heaven and described what heaven's like. 
I'm going there. Are you going there? Are you sure? Okay, and we're going there. It's good to read the. It's good to read the literature about where you're going to. So you're not, you're not surprised when you get there. But I've read a lot of stuff, and numerous people in this has actually turned around and said when they got there, they were they saw a man standing there, and they look at him and they say, I, I know him from somewhere. I, I just I don't know where, but I know him. I know him, and it turns out it's their angel from the day you arrived. God assigns an angel to you to watch over you, to keep you, and to protect you. There's an angel of the Lord travels in your car. There's an angel. You were never alone. You may feel like you're alone, but you're never alone. When you're in your greenhouse, your outhouse, when you're in your polytunnel, when you're on a bus in a submarine, it doesn't matter where you are. You are never alone because there's an angel of the Lord has been assigned to you. Look at somebody say, I'm feeling good already. A sign to me, an angel of the Lord. When Peter was released from prison and went to the world, the prayer meeting knocked the door, and the girl came and looked through the spy hole and, and thought, can't be, and run back in and told the boys, they said, Peter is at the door. They said, it couldn't be. It must be his angel. Somehow or another, the first century church understood this, that people have a personal angel assigned to them all the days of their life to watch over them. Now let me tell you something, you have got to be doing what's right. You do not want to chase that one away if he's standing in their garden. I want him closer to me than a brother. I don't want him standing on the far corner when I'm over here wrestling with something or something's crawling up behind me. I want him right there beside me. So you've got to learn how to walk in the fear of the Lord. There's number three, the cherubims. Cherubims they are what is known as worshiping angels. They're also guardians. They guard things. They guard the things that God has put in you. But let me tell you, the main mention of it, your Bible find that them cherubims, they actually were, they were set at the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve was put out. There was, there, those cherubims were set at the garden at the gate with flaming swords that nobody could get past that anymore. These are fierce. These are fierce. These are not small men just standing there looking and blinking and wondering what's going on. These are fierce armies of God, let me tell you. But they're there and their main assignment is worship. They, they worship 24-7, 24 hours a day. There's no such thing there because there's no time. But for our reference, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they're worshiping around the throne of God. Let me tell you something. Whenever you begin to worship, I'm talking about true worship. I'm not talking about just singing along with Johnny. But I'm talking about somebody who's got a heart to worship God. When they're worshiping God, you are attracting angels. Those worshiping angels are attracted to worship. When you worship, this is why the worship in church has to be special. You can have sing-along songs. You can have good old foot-topping songs. I don't want them. Not interested in them. I want the ones that brings the very presence of God. I want the ones that brings those, attracts angels. When the angels of the Lord fill up a sanctuary, everything changes. The very atmosphere changes in a church sanctuary. Anything can happen. The peace of God comes in with it. It opens you for revelation. Healing. People got he can get healed right in the midst of it. But it comes because God wants to do something, but he assigns the angels first. And your worship, your true, pure worship, attracts those guardian angels. See, it's not enough to worship in the sanctuary. If that's all you ever do, then you're probably alone when you're in the house. But if you want your house to be filled, if you want the hell that's going on inside your house to disappear, then attract those minister, attract the ministering angels, the messenger angels, attract those worshiping angels. Start worship. Put on worship music in your house. Turn it down low if necessary. But it's like beat them. It attracts them. Attract them. Fill your house with angelic hosts. See, if you play rock music all the time, you'll fill your house with a different spirit. So as Christians, we need to fill our house with worship. We need to be singing. We need to be humming. We need to be in our car. We need to have, have that type of music on. Fill the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere. When the enemy comes in, he'll bring in all types of thoughts and ideas and arguments and criticism. He'll bring all that. This different spirits that's coming into your abode wherever you are. You can change that in a second. Start worshiping the Lord. Start worshiping the Lord from the depth of your, of your very inside, and you'll attract them. You've got to understand they live in the very presence. 
of Almighty God. They live to worship. They live to war. They live to guard. So you've got to set up your atmosphere. You've got to set up your abode. You've got to set up where you are for the same thing, to attract them. They wouldn't be too attracted if the, for half the nonsense that goes on inside people's houses, but you need to change that. Number four, and I'm very interested in this bunch, is called ministering angels. And they usually, on a regular basis, come in human form. And yet every occasion that I've heard people talk to missionaries, talk to people, that angelic, had angelic visitations, nearly always came in human form. And they came, they bring great encouragement. They come, they bring supplies, they meet the needs, and they bring help in a time of need. Mark chapter 1, verse 13 gives an account of one. He says, and this is by Jesus, he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. He's out there on his own. He's, in a way, he's going through a temptation, a trial period, but the Bible says there was a ministering angels, a ministering angels came on them. I want to tell you something. You maybe have overlooked this or forgot this, but when you're going through your trials, there's a ministering angel who's looking for you. He's wanting to know, is he welcome? You can invite him. You can bring him in. You'll find the same angels, those ministering angels, turned up later in the life of Jesus when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's kneeling and he's worshiping and he's praying. And the Bible said that his tears, it, it, it became like great sweats of blood, became blood coming down from him in the, in the anxiety of the moment. And the Bible says angels came and ministered unto him. Don't you know God wants to minister to you? He wants to dispatch them angels to you. Uh, many years ago, I heard a preacher, actually a missionary, but they were, became a pastor later, and they uh, began to open, the, in their discussions, they talked about a revelation that I'd not heard before, and they said something that, that got a hold of me. They said that they had, they found out they knew how to prepare their heart and prepare the people and prepare their sales for angelic visitations. And they said they needed them. They were ministering in Ethiopia for many, many years, and they said they saw this all the time when the needs were there and, and there, was, uh, there was lack and there was different things. And they learned how to prepare things and prepare their hearts and prepare their house for visitation of the Lord. See, they would come every single time. They'd come and the needs would be met and things would happen. Answers would come and they'd get things done. And whenever that, the, the missionary was talking, I was thinking, great, get my note out here. I'm going to find out how to do this business. But let me tell you something. They talked about that and then moved on to the subject. Now, the guy was a little bit aged. And I thought, well, maybe he's got a little bit of mind, mind memory lapse, so he'll maybe remember somewhere near the end of the message he'd come back. But he never came back with the answers. But he left it ringing on the inside of me. You can attract. There is something we can do to attract. So I actually had to ask the Lord many years after that. I asked him, I can, can you show me? Can you show me how I can attract angels? Can you show me how I can attract them, how I can bring them in around the ministry? Ah, so we don't want to be flaky, but if God's using angels to minister to us, then I want in on it. I want to know. I want to get the job done. And after that, I was reading the scripture in, in Judges chapter 13. And, and the Bible says, and there was a certain man of Zorah uh, uh, from uh, the family of, of Dan Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and she could not bear children. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto her, and said, so what type, of, what type of angel is that? It's a messenger. The angel of the Lord came back and, and said to her, Behold now, you're barren, and you birth not, but you shall conceive, and you shall bear a son. Now this woman, she, after this angel had said that, the angel went off, and the, she took off running and went and told her husband. And the husband said, said My goodness me. He, said, he says, Here's what we'll do. We'll pray, and we'll ask that the angel will come back and give us further instructions. So there, there's, I, I, when I read that, I thought, right, they're, they're, they've got a visitation, she's had a visitation, and this man, he's, he's wanting the visitation again. He wants to attract them again. How did he do it? He says, here's what we'll do. We'll pray, and we'll ask them. And then we tell you, the Bible says, they prayed, and the angel came back. So I wrote across, the, across my diary that day when I seen that, prayer activates angelic hosts. Prayer attracts. Here's what else I found. In da Daniel chapter 10 and verse 12, and they said unto me, he said, this is as the angel said, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day you did set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before the Lord. Your words were heard, and I came for your words. Daniel knew what it was like to attract 
the angels of the Lord. He said he set his heart and he prayed. And he prayed verbally. Actually, he fasted and prayed. But he prayed fervently. See, you need to put your prayer life up to another level. You need to be praying focused prayers. But here's not, he, not only the prayer. The prayer activates things. But here's what else he did. He chastened himself. He looked till his life. He decided, i, I got to do stuff. We understand this, that we have authority. That angels are, are at God's bidding. When we use the name of Jesus, angels can be loosed. Angels can be released to do things. Angels can be attracted. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19 says, I'll give you the keys. I want to give you a key, the keys. I want to give you one, just one key this morning to the kingdom of heaven, that whatsoever you bind, you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be released. So whatever I bind, well, I can draw a halt to, I can put a stop to, I can bind it. And on the other hand, whatever I release will be released from heaven. That's authority. That is the ability to release. If God uses angels to get the job done, he has now, through this scripture, give us the ability to loose angels, to release those angels to do the bidding. We have also the ability to bind the satanic angels and the dark angels. We have the ability to bind and to loose, to send out and to command those angels to go. But let me tell you before you do it, you have got to set your life in order. Did you get this? Prayer activates. Prayer dispatches. Those, those, we, I've used this in a simple matter. Laura and I was talking about this morning. I ministered in this many, many years ago, and I don't talk about it too much now. But we learned how to, how, to, how to walk with angels, how to command angels, how to bind demonic spirits and cast them out and do all them types of things. But on the lesser format, there was one time when we heard somebody, when they lost something, couldn't find something, they loosed the angels to bring it to them. And there was one time we couldn't find something. And so we said, what does that work? And then when we tell you, many, I was asking Laura about this morning, when did this happen? Uh, and what brought it to mind was two days ago, she, uh, she lost an earring. Uh, and it was, it was a special earring. It was an expensive earring, but it was a present that somebody had bought her. And, and she looked at me. We were right about She looked at me with shock on her face, and she says, I'm one earring missing. I'm one earring. And she said, look, it's my best one. It's my real good. And I'm one earring missing. And immediately I said, well, did you loose the angels to find it? Because we did this before. We'd loose the angels to find it. And here's the, here's the prayer we prayed. We loose the angels to find it and put it in a place where we can get it. So wherever it is, the angels know where it is. They, they, they know exactly where it is. When we hunted hand low, didn't you? Hunted, I went out and looked in the car underneath, everywhere. We couldn't find a thing. So, so, we, so she prayed a prayer and said, I'll loose your angels now to find that earring and put it in a place where I can get it quickly. And let me tell you, the next thing, she was upstairs, she came running down with the earring in her hand. I said, where was it? She said, you'll never guess. It was wrapped up in a handkerchief and placed in my jewelry drawer. I tell you, how did that rascal get there? How did it get there? You just ask, ah, just lower on her heads away. <laughs> no, 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 listen to me. We have done this so many times. This works. This works. Many years ago, she had taken off her wedding ring while she was doing some stuff at the kitchen sink, and the wedding ring went missing. We hunted high low, took the drain out the ring, looking for a wedding ring. Could not find a wedding ring. So we loosed the angels to find the wedding ring and put it in a place where we can get it easy. Let me tell you, she's upstairs. She's now watering the plants. And right beside a plant that's just been watered is the wedding ring. How did it get there? The angels set it there. Let me tell you something. Write that down. I'm going to try this. This sounds crazy, but I'm going to try this. I have had to do this. My mind is not the best. Sometimes I'm wearing my glasses like this on the top of my head, and I'm running around frantic saying, where's my glasses? Are you with me? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're crazy looking for your car key. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But there's some more important things. And in the days of textbooks from the car, then we always have our stuff filed so as you can find it. But one day I needed to find the textbook for the tax my car, and I couldn't find it. Let me tell you, I pulled my office apart. For all morning, I took everything. I could not find it. And Laura came in to me. She says, get the angels to find it. I said, right. I said, I was in a panic. I, I, you, you can't find the tax book. You can't tax your car. 
And let me tell you something. I, we did it. We said, minister is, we lose you to find, you know where that tax book is. Find that tax book and put it in a place where I can get my hands on it, where it's right there for me. Let me tell you, when I finished praying, I looked up and I put my hand like this for to get something else off my bookshelf, and there was the tax book sitting right there. Look at somebody say, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try it out. Laugh if you will, but the next time you can't find something, you just try that thing. Do you see how fast that works? But here's what it is. Here's what it is. We have the ability to dispatch them. We have the ability for them to do war on our behalf. But you've got to put your house in order. You've got to have your life in order. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you what repels ministering angels. I'll tell you what repels warring angels. If you want them in around you, then please listen to me. Carnality chases angels away. They do not want to come in. I've told you before, they, they, they live in an atmosphere of worship 24-7. They live in the presence of God. They live to war. They live to protect. They live to speak and bring messages. But then they come into your house and there's no word read. There's no word spoke. There's no prayer life. There's no worship. There's no thanksgiving for anything that ever happens. Let me tell you, they put their head through the door to help and there's nothing of heaven in there, so they hightail it out faster than you can imagine, and you're on your own. You ever wonder why you don't get your prayers answered? You ever wonder why other people's getting theirs and you're not? Have you ever thought about putting your life in order? Have you ever thought about putting your, putting your, just the things, the ordinary things? If you want the angels of the Lord to fight for you, get the carnality out of your life. Here's the second thing they hate, rebellion. Rebellion. That's a, that thing that doesn't like authority, that thing that won't come under control, that rebellion, when God says do, and they say, well, I don't see why I have to do it. That rebellion, that rebellious spirit, they hate it with avengers. They won't come near your house. Those ministering angels will not be anywhere near you if you've got rebellion in your heart. God tell you why, because they saw it before. They saw it before the earth ever was. Before mankind had ever happened, they saw it with one called Lucifer up there in heaven who rebelled got full of pride and rebelled and went up there. And let me tell you, they're sitting full of rebellion. And the God says, I'll deal with this. Those angels were there and saw it when Lucifer and one-third of the angels of heaven were kicked out of heaven and came down upon into the heavenlies and down onto earth. They were there. They saw it. They saw the rebellion. They heard the talk. They heard the criticism of heaven. They heard the nasty words spoken against God. They there, they saw the angels stomp their feet and said, who do they think they are? I'm not going to do it. Why should I answer? And they heard and they saw the rebellion up in heaven. And let me tell you, that heaven was cleaned out. They were kicked out of heaven and heaven went back to the peaceful place. And now they come to your house to do war on your behalf and they see the exact same thing that they saw at the beginning of time with Lucifer. They see rebellion in your house. Well, I don't see why I have to. Why should I have to go to our prayer meeting? Why do I have to do it? I'm not going to do it. Let them go. They see it. They, all you're doing is chasing the angels away. I don't need angels running from me. I need angels running to me. But they're not going to be there. When they see carnality, and all they see is rebellion, and stubbornness, and unthankfulness, and plain nastiness. Some nasty Christians look at somebody and say, they didn't come this morning. Nasty people criticizing. Do you know there's people, and they spend more time on their, what's that called, social media? They spend more time on their social media than they do in the Word of God. Did you ever time yourself how much in a day you actually look at your Facebook? Have you ever looked at how many times you'll spend on, on, on junk uh, in comparison to the Word of God? You don't spend any time with the Word of God, but you spend all the, There's some people in church players with their phone. When God's trying to speak to you. But you can't hear because Facebook is talking to you. Hell is visiting you. I'm telling you how to get rid of the demons that's after your children. I'm telling you how to do warfare. Because if you don't, you'll have to kiss your kid goodbye one day. And maybe visit them in an asylum. Or visit them in a courthouse. Or you'll have to bring them some sort of medication. Because their hands are shaking with alcohol. And they can't get free. But somewhere you refused. Somewhere your rebellion got a hold of you. And the ministering angels are saying, just let us in. Bring us in. We'll deal with it. We'll take care of it. We'll stop it. But you wouldn't. Because of your carnality and rebellion. Let me tell you, it's not that the angels aren't there. 
It's not that heaven hasn't got the ability. It's not that heaven stopped talking to you and doesn't want to talk to you. God has everything lined up. He's actually got a personal angel assigned to you, but that rascal can't get near you. Can't get near you. It came from the presence of God. It lives in the presence of God. It hears angelic worship 24-7. And it comes to your house, and it doesn't hear anything. It doesn't hear a thing. You need to change. There's warning angels and there's messenger angels, and they want to come. You know what the Bible says? I'll bring this to a close. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 1. He says, Let brotherly love continue. And be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some of you have actually entertained angels. Unaware. Isn't that amazing? Entertained angels. Unaware. You didn't even know it. You just thought it was a man. You just thought it was somebody lying on the side of the road. You just thought it was somebody. And they no, no, it was an angel. And God put them in. Let me tell you why. God says to him, to, and be careful about this. God wants to watch you, how you deal with strangers. And how you deal with ordinary folk. He's watching that. How you deal with ordinary folk. And he's testing you. Because he is not going to send his angels to, into your trust. Till he sees you can handle human beings. Because I'll tell you why. Because you can say something or be right down nasty to somebody. And there'll be no repercussion. Because nobody's going to say anything back. You're, you're too big to be spoken to backwards. So let me tell you. So, so there's no repercussion. But you can't deal with the angels like that. Because you insult one of them, you are in trouble, not just with them, you are in trouble with God himself. So he doesn't allow the angels to come here until he trusts you, to watch you, to see how you're going to hand with mankind. So he says, hey, to, hey, listen, kids, just let brotherly love continue. Look at somebody say, you've got to love me, you've got to love me. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Let me read you this, and I'm almost close in Exodus 23 and verse 20. Behold, I sent an angel before you many, many years ago when I pastored the first church, pioneered the first church in Inniskillen. One of the first words God spoke to me concerning it was, he says, I'm going to send an angel with you everywhere you go. Because we had to drive from here to Inniskillen every, uh, in the morning and drive home, and then we drove back that night. and back. We did that for years. So you not only need a protection there, I need a protection when I was there. But anyway, he says, he says, I'll send an angel before you. He will keep you in the way, and I'll bring you into the place I have prepared. Now beware of him. Listen to this. Beware of him, and obey his voice, and provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you will obey his voice indeed, he says, and do all that I tell you, then I will be an enemy unto your enemy. That's what I want. I want him to be an enemy under my honors. He says, if you'll just obey him and don't insult them angels, he says, here's what happened. He says, I'll be an enemy under your enemy and I'll be an adversary under your adversary. For my angel will go before you. That's your angel. That's your personal angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites, the Hittites, the Pesites, the Cregavonites, the Portadianites, and the Lurganites, and the Hivites, and the Jesubites, and I will cut them off. And you shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and quite break their images down, and you shall serve the Lord your God. And listen to somebody. He's talking about this angel. He said, and he will bless your bread, and he will bless your food, and he takes sickness out of your midst. God wants to do that, but how does he do it? He sends angels. But he said, when them angels come, you don't want to be messing with that thing. He said, so let's see how you get on with humans. Let's see if you can love. Let's see if you'll give. Let's see if you'll bless them. Let's see how you get on here. Let Brother Liam continue. Because if you can pass that test, he says, I can send the angels. And when they come, they'll change the very atmosphere. They will do war on your behalf for you. That's what I need. So, Father, if there's anything in my heart against anybody, let me talk to me about it. I will confess it. I will get rid of it because I want these angels fighting on my behalf. I don't want to lose one. I don't want to lose a congregation. I don't want to lose a member. I don't want to lose my call. I don't want to lose any of my children or my grandchildren. I don't. I don't. So I need those angels fighting on my behalf. Revelation chapter 19. We're finishing. Revelation 19 and verse 1. It says, I saw an angel come down from heaven. Just one angel. Having the key of the bottomless pit and a chain in his hand. It probably would read on a smile on his face. Swinging the chain. I saw the chain. He had the key to the bottomless pit and the chain in his hand. And he laid hold of that dragon. 
the old serpent, which is the devil, Satan. And he said, and he bound him. Just one angel. Just one angel bound Satan in that chain and cast him in, bound him for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations anymore till a thousand years be fulfilled. I want to tell you something. Just one angel did that. One angel, that's all I need in my house. That's all I need in the church doors. That's what I need standing there. That's what I need in the congregation. That's what I need. We need to attract angels, folks. We need to attract angels. They're there. The power is there for us. We have just got to prepare ourselves for it. Get the junk out. Set our house. Set our heart in order. If we will do that and pray, we have the ability to release them. Change your prayer life immediately. Release those angels. Loose those angels to do whatever it bidding that needs to be done in the kingdom of God. Shut hell down. Shut down the kingdom of darkness. Bind that thing that's coming against you. Bind that spirit of alcohol. Bind that spirit of lust. Bind that spirit. You can bind that spirit. And then don't just leave it bound. Loose. You have the ability to release angelic spirits. Release peace and joy and contentment. You can change the atmosphere. You can't do it on your own. But when you release those angels, angels come from all parts. I have talked to people through the years. Uh, down the ages, I've talked to people who has had angelic visitations. Now there's the wacky ones who had an angelic, some sort of angelic type of thing walked in, never said a hang, never done a hang, but left fear in the heart. You got a bad visitation right there. Imagine you had put a sign on the wall and say, "No, we don't need any what you got from here." But I got people who tell you about angels came with a message from the Lord, who came and did warfare. So when they went out, the enemy was already defeated. You can't do ministry. You cannot do ministry unless you know you've got angels at your bidding that will guard the doors, that will guard you coming in and guard you coming out. There's people out there who would threaten your life. The enemy would like to take you out in a second. You've got to know you're protected and guarded. But the, if, you, if you want them, that protection to leave you, just mess about and fool about and watch how fast you're on your own. And let me tell you something, when you're on your, on your own, you're cannon fodder. When you're on your own, that devil will wipe you in a second of time. You've got to get closer now. The blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you of all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ can ratify and rectify. And not only that, you put your life in order and say, Father, I'm going to live for you and no one else. When you begin to do it, the angels of the Lord close in on you. The angels of the Lord come closer. They begin to camp in about you. Put your worship music on. Put whatever music you like, whatever era you come from. Everybody's got different ways and forms of it. But put it on. But put it on. Put it on and crank it up in your office, wherever you are. When I go to meditate and put this together, I've always got worship on. I found another one the other day, a three-hour one. Come from a Bible, Indiana Bible School. And the three hours of worship. So I have that on. Uh, uh, I had that on twice. Live from yesterday, tea time. I put it on for six hours, just playing in the background. And I'd work a bit at this, and then I'd put it down, and then I'd close my eyes, and I'd talk. Sometimes I'd just sit there and bask on different songs, but you can create an atmosphere, and you just know the angelic hosts are in round about you, guarding you, watching over you when you sleep. The angels of the Lord are encamped about us. That car park out there is full of chariots of fire. You can't see them, but they're there. The warring angels are doing warfare on your behalf. All you've got to do is command it. All you've got to do is release it. All you've got to do is pray it with a pure heart. Get a pure heart and begin to pray those prayers and watch how fast God deals with this stuff. You can bring money in. The money that the enemy's stealing from you, things that's being held up, you can release those angels to bring it to you. Just watch how fast it comes. you just got to get your life right. And you just got to get your heart right. I close with this statement. Satan is outranked, he is outnumbered, and hell is no match for the kingdom of God. And because of the blood of Jesus and because of the cross, you're now on the winning side. You've got the angelic hosts on your side. What is it that has come against you? What is it that's whispering in your ear and telling you you're a nobody and you can't, you're a nothing? What is it now that's now right on your doorstep, filling you full of fear, filling you full of terror, painting a picture that you're never going to last, you're never going to... What is that? That's the kingdom of darkness. And it's, it's come real close now. It's come real close. In fact, if you don't clean your house up, that'll get closer than you could ever imagine. 
and you'll have hell right in your own house, arguing and bickering and fighting. But you can put an end to it. You can repent and get before God and get the joy of the Lord and put your worship music on and start to push that things back and invite the angels of the Lord. I invite you this week. Why don't you bind the stuff that's coming against you? Now, don't be binding human beings. <laughs> but the stuff that comes against you, that's hurting you, that's harming you, that's, that's aggravating, that's criticizing, why don't you bind that spirit? Bind that spirit. How do you do it? Just say it. I bind you in Jesus' name. And loose the opposite. I loose the spirit of peace and joy and contentment. And watch how fast that nasty person changes. Watch how fast the atmosphere changes. Watch the stuff that, that belongs to you, but somebody else has watch. It's bind that hindrance spirit. And watch how fast things then begin to come to you. It's up to you. God has given you an army and put you in the head and said, you're the champion of this league. Go on ahead and get, get going. You've got to learn how to command the army of God. And things, things will change. Things will change dramatically. You're a person of significance. You're a person of great value to the kingdom of God. He has put you there. He's given you inside information to the authority you have so that you can stop some things and push some things back. Don't let that sickness come any further. Don't let that debt build up. Don't let that heartache go any longer. Do something. Put a stop to it. Invite whatever else is opposite to it. Invite it right into your house, into your home, and walk in it and watch God to see what he's going to do. He wants to fill our homes with gladness and joy. He wants to put you in the driving seat concerning your kids and your grandkids and your teenagers. It seems to be all we ever do these days is warfare on behalf of people. When people phone in with all cancers and say, it's all we seem to do is warfare. The church of the Lord Jesus needs to understand that you're in authority and you're in a great place. The things are about to change. Whatever he says unto you, do it now. You've got the key. When you go home today, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, get that worship music on. And whatever he puts on your heart to, to, to take authority over, to pray against, do it. And watch now how things begin. Things is about to break through. Things is about to change. Things is about to snap. Things that held you back is not going to hold you back anymore. This is a great day of deliverance. Here's what the Lord says. The armies of the Lord are encamped about you. They're encamped about your home. They're encamped about your house. They're in your driveway. They're in your garage. The armies of the Lord are sitting right outside your house. They're outside your business. They're outside wherever you are. There's those that travel with you and that those are, there's those that's ahead of you. I've even got those that's one on the journey there. God says they're at your bidding. I sent them for to watch over you, to take care of you. God says you need to instruct them and replace them and put them in the place where you need to go. But your breakthrough is eminent, saith the Lord. Your breakthrough is eminent. The things that's held back, God says, I'm giving you the key. They'll hold you back no more. I will help you, saith the Lord. I'll show you the first breakthrough so you can press through to the second and the third. Once you understand your position, you'll have no problem with this. God says, I'm going to help you. I brought this to your attention this morning. Warfare will be done and done quickly. And those things that I say unto you, move in on them now. Move in on them now. And you'll begin to see those things break off and break off fast. I'm on your side. I'm on your side, saith the Spirit of the Lord. I need to pray for people right now, uh, and uh, uh, we just need to get this done. We've got 10 minutes. I, I need to pray for people right now. Those people that's in a fierce situation, those people where the enemy has come right tight on you, and he seemingly won't back off. There's the enemy, and, and, and he's making you afraid, and you're losing your sleep, and it's a nightmare situation. You're in this building right now. I want to pray with you. I have authority in the name of Jesus. I want to break that off you. You'll walk out of this place in freedom. You'll walk out of this place with a second chance, another avenue. But right now, you just respond. Out. Who are you? Where are you? Jump up the front. Come on up here, right there. Just come up, and I'll come down, and I will pray with you. Who are you? Where are you? Nobody? I'm going home. <laughs> That's right. I don't have time to mess with this. It's not everybody, but there is those. And you're facing the, facing the greatest battle of your lifetime right now. Right now. God's speaking to you this morning. He's telling you, you're, God's on your side. He's about to do tremendous things. But he, he just, listen, if God just did tremendous things and went back home, we'd be a mess because we'd have to just call on him every time. He wants to show you, look, you can deal with this yourself. So is there anybody else? That's right. 
Don't be embarrassed and don't be afraid. And I won't embarrass you and I won't say anything that will shame you. Only good things. I just want to take authority in Jesus' name. I'm coming down right now. Let me just close this up. For those people that's watching right now, God bless you wherever you are. But you learn how to take authority and you do it because God is doing the most tremendous thing in Jesus' name. Amen.